Welcome back, friends. So I was hoping that this next video would be of us showing some progress to the uh, the new property, but uh, we had a little bit more rain. Weather has been slightly un cooperative once again but the rest of the week looks good and sunny and clear so hopefully we'll get some good footage of that here soon um, today we are going to go ahead and plant the rest of our strawberry bed last year we planted about 25 bare root plants um, and they did really great so we're just going to finish out the bed with 25 more and hopefully have a good amount of strawberries this year um, but I just noticed that when I opened up the bed, there is a colony of fire ants in there. So, um, if you're an organic gardener, you know how frustrating this is and how hard it is to get rid of them. So, we tried something last season that seemed to work really well. So, that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you um, how we do it and see if we can't get these guys out of our strawberry bed. So this is a trick that I found on some online forums last year. It is an organic or all natural way to get rid of fire ants and we tried it and it worked. So I'm going to do this again in our garden bed. I have also used um, dry grits. I don't have any on hand right now, but I actually like that method as well because I could just sprinkle it around wherever I needed to. It didn't have to touch any plants or anything like that. Um, and the ants would grab the grits and I guess after they eat them, it would expand and um, kill the ants. But I don't have any grits on me. This next solution is what I have and it works um, pretty well. I'm hoping that we don't get any rain so it doesn't dilute it but we'll do the best we can because we need them out of that bed so that we can put our strawberries in there and enjoy them this spring. Okay, so first you need at least a gallon size container. Um, I like to use a pump sprayer like what you use for liquid fertilizers or insect repellent, that sort of thing, but I could not get the lid off of mine and Robert's not home right now aka my muscle. So I'm going to use this old popcorn bucket from the movie theater that's hanging out. It's about a gallon, so that's what we need. Um, so we're going to start off with six ounces of orange oil. And I found this on Amazon last year. Um, it's used for cleaning and other household purposes. So six ounces per one gallon. If you wanna mix up more than this at a time, you would just um, change your ingredients accordingly. So six ounces of orange oil, one tablespoon of molasses, And just a little bit of dish soap, I guess that helps. The suds kind of help it uh, stick to them. So the theory is, I think they go after the molasses to eat the sweetness, and then the orange oil actually is like an acid, and then the soap helps it to stick on them. So then to this mixture, I'm gonna add one gallon of water, which I'll do outside so I don't have to carry it all the way to the garden. Mix it up really good, and then I'm just going to dump this right on their anthill. So, see how it goes. Okay, so supposedly if you dig up an ant pile and top it on another ant pile they'll fight each other and will actually um, kill each other that way but I haven't seen any other ant piles just yet this one is actually a reoccurrence from last year they were here before so I think they've overwintered in this bed because it's dry and it's warm 
Um, so it's kind of ideal for them. It's up off the ground. So I'm just going to remove it with a shovel and try and throw it over in a different location and then I'm going to pour this solution on both where they were and then where I relocate them to. So hopefully it'll saturate them good and well. Um, I'm going to have one shot at digging them up because as you can imagine they're going to crawl up this shovel. And what you can do is actually coat the shovel with your solution. It helps um, keep them from getting on your hands but I'm just going to do one good dig, remove them, pour the solution on the existing pile in the pile that I dump and hope for the best. We'll see what happens. Crawling up yet, so I'm gonna give them one more. Where did you put them? Okay. Were they crawling up the thing? No, I didn't see any. What is that? This is that orange mm. solution. It actually smells like orange juice. It does. It smells good. It looks like that, um, it looks like butter that goes on popcorn in the movie theater. <laughs> in, a, in a popcorn bucket. From the movie theater. Yeah. That is liquidy as it is too. Mm. Why were they all in there? Yeah, it's just, it's a good safe place for them. Mm. You can see they're all slowing down. We have a pretty good size nest in this corner here. So that might delay us just a little bit from planting these other strawberries. Um, but we'll let the solution sit and then maybe try again tomorrow when it's a little safer. These chickens sure have a lot to say today. Let's see what all this commotion's about. Nobody's even making noise but Ivy. Let's see clover. Here's the culprit of it all. Is it your fault? Hmm? Did Are you, you hogging the, the favorite box? Did you lay the egg yet? The eggs are there. There's the one. Two. Two. Look, everybody's wondering why you're making all that fuss. that we have two nesting boxes in the coop and then we've made 
one, two, and then even on the ground, that was actually for our ducks, but if they wanted to, there's four more nesting boxes here. She just went and got it in there now. But they all have to cram into one nesting box and then they fight over it and they squawk and they make a fuss, don't they? Hmm. You know anybody else that makes a fuss around here? Is it you? Hmm? All of you. All of you, so noisy, aren't you? So in efforts to make my fe myself feel a little bit better about the overcast, cool day that we're having today, which won't be the only one because this is kind of like our, our fake spring is what they call it here in North Carolina. It's like the beginning of March. It starts warming up and everybody gets all excited. This thing start to... Uh, bud and bloom and blossom and then we have a couple of like late season frosts and then you have to go out and cover everything up um so since we can't plant the strawberries right now and have to wait till tomorrow i'm going to go around and look at some of the the buds and blossoms that we have coming out currently okay so in the last video i showed you guys that our trees that we potted this season um, have started budding out and this one actually has a little flower bloom on there the GoPro isn't the best for up close pictures but it's very beautiful this is um, one of our nectarine trees the persimmon tree doesn't have much going on just yet and neither does the fig um, but this is another what do we have here plum it's budding out getting ready to bloom and then our other nectarine is the same. And then here in these decrepit looking pots, the goats ate them back last season. So I wasn't sure if they were going to come back, but we've got some citronella starting to come back. I don't know if this lemongrass will come back or not. I'm hopeful though. So over here in our herb box. This is our mint. Um, we'll come through and break off all this dead stuff, clean it up, but you can see that down underneath it, there's new life coming up and has taken over a good quarter of this bed. So we're gonna have to probably um, dig some of it up. Mint and lemon balm both are very invasive and will take over whatever they are planted in, um, which is okay because we love both, but we try to do our best to keep it in a centrally located area so that we can grow other things next to it. Our chives actually never died back. They have been green all year long. Um, they did get cut down to a nub by the goats, wouldn't you know? Um, then over here, we actually have what I think is some cilantro, which is not supposed to be a perennial, but maybe just some seeds were laying dormant under there because it's not parsley. Um, it's more dainty, like a cilantro. So I'm kind of excited about that. It doesn't have much smell yet, so it's hard to tell. Then over here we have our lemon balm that's down underneath all this old dead stuff too. And then here we have a parsley that's growing up. And that one does definitely have a smell. You can see that the leaves are a little bit shaped different. This is an Italian parsley. It's always exciting to see plants come back for the new season on their own. I love perennials because they just take care of themselves and then you get to reap the benefits. So we will probably get out here and clean this bed up tomorrow. Over here in this corner, our elderberries. The elderberries have also um, became victims of the goats. Anything edible in the yard 
they're gonna eat it. So we've done our best to try and keep them away so that we can actually benefit from the plants that we've planted for ourselves. But goats are stubborn creatures and do what they can to get to what they want. So um, our other fruit trees have not started budding just yet. These are nectarine trees as well, which the ones in the pots have started to um, get buds on them maybe because they're new I think these ones are still too cold so probably in the next couple weeks though we'll start to see some some blooms on these trees and nothing on the blueberries yet either I'm actually gonna pull that crepe myrtle out um, it's very beautiful and it flowers nicely and it's a nice shade for the animals but it really does take up a lot of room in this little area and I'd rather grow more fruit and edible things. So since our plans have gone awry for the day, we're gonna go ahead and finish out planting our summer starts. Our seed trays came in. I actually went to Lowe's um, the day that I made the video about starting our summer plants to buy some more and they actually only sell them with the trays and the lids that go with them. And for one package of them, it was like six bucks or something. And I really didn't need the trays. I have plenty of trays. Um, I have plenty of lids. I just needed the cells. They didn't sell these separate. So I got on Amazon and I ordered 60 sets of 12 um, for like 19 bucks. And the shipping was only two days. So I was like, well, I'll just wait, save the money. So that's the plan. I'm gonna fill some of these with some onion seeds. I'm gonna go ahead and start some okra. Last year the okra that I planted directly into the garden just took forever to come up. I think it was because we kind of had late frost so they were a little bit stunted. Once they came up they did great but I want to go ahead and start them and give them an early start. So I'm gonna do some onions, some okra, my peppers, uh, maybe a few more herbs, and I might start a couple of flowers like nasturtium and see what else I have in my seed box and go from there. with planting all the seeds we might have forgotten to plant peppers the plan was to plant like that much with herbs and then plant the rest with peppers and we planted a whole thing of herbs we'll have plenty to sell What, you don't warm up your seedlings by the fireplace? We've really been enjoying our rolling cart. It's made it really nice. We can just roll it right in front of our sunny window 
and in front of the fireplace when it's been cold in here to help the seedlings germinate. And then when it's nice and sunny outside, we just roll it right out on the back porch. So it's really taken a lot of the work out of it for us. So it's been a good purchase for sure. I will link the same cart in the descriptions below in case you're interested in getting one yourself. That's all we have for today. We are going to revisit our strawberry bed tomorrow. Hopefully the fire ants will be gone. We can go ahead and weed it and plant our new strawberries and hopefully the spring weather will be here soon. So we'll see you on the next video. Bye.